Hey guys, so welcome back to another edition of our Stocks by Request where we talk about and we analyze the top stocks that you guys want me to to uh, drill down for all of you from a, te- a technical analysis uh, point of view. And I do hope that whatever we talk about here gives you the firm foundation that you get that you get to analyze it on your own accord. So let's just give it a few minutes. Let's see and wait for you guys to also join us as well. So I also shared this in Facebook and LinkedIn. So we will have some people that are from Facebook and uh, LinkedIn joining us as well. So a few minutes for people to start putting in their stocks. However, before I also begin, I'd like to share this. Now, I mentioned this in the video that I posted uh, more than an hour ago. You can watch that where we talked about the index. And the index as a whole, no, uh, tuloy-tuloy, yung pag, uh, tuloy-tuloy yung red candles, yung pagbagsak niya, uh, yung pag-breakdown niya. It has been uh, very, very, I think, fluid. And meron siyang konting divergence because the large cap stocks, the ones that are being bought by institutions, are the ones that have been uh, falling and dropping, while the ones that have moved also because of uh, sentiment, price action, they're the ones who have continually pushed up over and over. And that's why, that's what we've been seeing. You know? uh, we saw a lot of stocks that uh, when you try to analyze them from a technical analysis point of view, they were breaking out, they were moving. And then we also saw some stocks that even though they were technically bullish from a fundamental point of view, they weren't really the ones that were super fundamentally sound. But anyways, uh, ayan, we have people already joining us. You have uh, Leia uh, Coligado. You have uh, John Diaz. Agad ang live, sir. Oh, ginugulat ko kayo. I, I normally would have put this uh, late in the evening, pero I, I just thought to do this also now to see uh, ano yung best time uh, to do it. So far, no, when I did it around 10 p.m. two days ago, um, a lot of people were present there. We had, I think, peak no around 400 to 500 people joining us so ngayon 6 30 baka kumakain or people are trying to go home uh but yun we have uh pinoy blade hunter hello to you uh gerald salakup uh apl sir marvin of course we're gonna talk about that uh Leia's asking for aba uh to those joining us no uh, please do also put uh tagasan kayo para it's it's nice to also get in touch with uh different people or subscribers from different parts of the world then we're also live, Bala, by the way, here in Kumu. Um, Billy Bet from Italy, hello. Then you have uh, Taengon9, sabi niya ayun. Uh, Simon uh, Celado, her, hi sir, can you expect the delusion and how it affects ASEN? I think we had so many videos about that already. Uh, then you have Jerry Well, A, ang aga ni Sir Marvin. Uh, Jerry Well, ilan taon ka na ba? I'm so curious about that. No? Not, you've been very, very active in the channel. Uh, I just wanted to know how old are you. Babsi Wabsi, hello to you. Uh, uh, cooking ng inamo PH shout out sir Marv hello to you uh, Tango 9 ay ibang channel pala yun What's, what do you mean uh, then Charles Marlon Lara good evening to you uh, Babsi Wabsi is asking about APL of course we're gonna talk about APL uh, then you have uh, Israel who's a channel member hello to you uh, sakto pag open ng YouTube hello hello Israel uh Jerry Well is there. Dami nagtatanong about APL. Of course, we're gonna we're gonna talk about APL. No, I'm just waiting for. Let's just have people join us. Maybe in the five minute mark, we'll start also. Uh, Blue Charm, hello. Uh, Pau Ferrer, PHA. Um, JR asking for ASIN and IMI. Uh, Melissa and Sandoval, hello. Uh, first time, welcome to the channel. Uh, Obit Perez, good evening, sir. Marks BSC APL LIHC. Oi, ALHC, not much. Uh, not much messages about L- na wala na sobrang nagdumami messages uh green uh gt cap and mbt and then uh just just Niel tv as hello to you so yeah, let's start this now I, I know a lot of people will be asking about apl bsc uh pha asen dito we'll probably put that in the middle of the video so that um hindi siya ulit-ulitin yung tanong. maybe we'll start with carla abay first uh, who's asking about gt capital so uh, let's start this off with the larger cap companies para at least makita nyo yung narrative na medyo, uh, medyo consistent. No? The larger ones are the ones that are hit 
now. Uh, the ones that are not large cap stocks that have been getting a lot of attention, they're the ones that are moving. So GT Capital, uh, as you can see right here, uh, we plotted this. We plotted this support line at the 419 mark. No, and what's so interesting about that is uh, when we talked about this on a video, I think last week I was with Salvador Pito. I mentioned that it was at the resistance. It was continually uh, dropping because of its failure to break the resistance. Today. It attacked the support. Actually, yesterday, pa nga, yesterday it hit the 519 support level. As it hit the 519 support level, um, it was it was in a mode where either it bounces and goes back to the next resistance, or there's a possibility that it would break down. And by today's statistics, or at least by today's numbers, as you can see right here, uh, GT Cap is breaking below the 519 support level, given that it closed at 514. Now that being said. Medyo tight naman siya no, dito uh, sa 100-day moving average. So should there be any retracement because of the sell down from the breakdown of this particular support range, the next possible area where it could go is 498. But the strongest support right now that we have for GT cap is at the 454 level. I repeat, should selling happen, next possible support areas will be 498. And then next is at the 454 level. And that coincides already where the 200-day moving average is. And please do note already that this downward trending line is pushing uh, GT Capital lower. And if you'll allow me to zoom out, we've mentioned this with, in our video with Salve de Plito when we did the stocks by request. Pretty much, no, the large downward push for GT Cap is still pretty much there. And the large massive downtrend is still uh, upholded. So comment below if you're learning and if this is something that's helping you. Um, I want to talk about MBT, pero ngayon lang tayo mag-ano na dalawang, isang, dalawang stocks for one person. No? But uh, Carla has been very, very long in the channel also. So look at it here. Uh, it's continuing its breakdown. So as, or at least it's downward movement. We've mentioned this, that uh, it failed to break the support at the resistance last December. And because of that, it's continually... Uh, starting to push lower. So if you'll allow me to extend this, this is its downward trajectory right now. And we've talked a lot about uh, chart patterns. So this one is also trying to form a descending triangle, which is a downward uh, bias bearish uh, chart pattern. Now, that being said, because it failed to break past this level, and if you allow me to zoom in, you will see this also, that the 20 and 50 day moving averages are looking at looking as a resistance also blocking its upward movement. So the possible retracement for Metro Bank as of now, no, where it could possibly go is at the 43.2 level. So I repeat, if selling will continue, landing spot will be here. And if it does, it may look like a descending triangle. And if it does, if and if the 43.2 level does not hold, possible area for it to go is here first, where the 200-day moving average is at the 40 peso mark. To as low as our a support level that has protected it and blocked it uh, over the past few months at the 36 peso mark but watch watch it parin, that if it bounces here uh this is this could be the possible progression for metro bank for the short term please do note that banks have been hit um also for quite some time so it would be interesting to see how it plays out in the grand scheme of things we have jr labugin asking for ASEN or IMI. Um, I'm curious, guys, uh, what do you guys want more? Naunahin natin for this part of the video. Uh, would you want me to talk more about ASEN and IMI? And I realized for me to be able to make this live uh, sustainable, I need to stop a bit and drink water. So I'm wait, I'll am wait. i wait for your answers. ASEN or IMI, what do you guys want me to prioritize first? Anyone? No comments? Hmm. You want me to pick na lang? Walang nagano Puro hi, sir. Uh, si Mika Poo, hi, sir. Amir, good morning, good evening from Amir. Then you have Jocelyn Valdez, sabi niya, hi, sir. Uh, you have uh, Tessa Colin, hi, sir. Marvin, thank you for almost every day. I'm trying, trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to make this sustainable. Uh, Clarice Bergs. So what do you guys want? IMI or ASEN? 
You have Ernesto saying hi. Uh, nabigla ako sa live notification. Uh, Just Gurle, Jocelyn is asking for like uh, usually 10 or 11. Meron pa tayong video. Kaya siguro ako nag-live as early as now because I want to post some videos also later on tonight. Uh, w- w- wala, no? Sige, so I'll maybe do IMI. Uh, then let's try to do ASIN uh, later on. So for IMI, as you can see right here, uh, it's progressing into the breakout once again. And that's what's so interesting about this. Um, it's Wednesday today. We've been talking about IMI even in the first live that we did uh, last Monday that it broke out from the 9.42 resistance. But not just that, it was supported by RSI, MACD, GMMA showing that it was bullish. Then you also have the 20, 50, 100 day moving average showing you that it's also bullish. And then you have the trend lines also pointing towards the direction that it's not just a breakout, it's a breakout from a trend that was headed up. Then we place this line also, the 10.5 line, which last Monday it broke out from. Then yesterday it hit this level, but it started to bounce and it closed higher. But there was an intraday move at the 11.9212 peso mark, but it got sold down, but we saw it still uh, close above the support, which is the most important. So in my opinion, no, uh, you move yesterday, what was so important about that was, it wasn't just about the green candle that we saw, but it was more about that it's still this particular support level, this new support level at 10.6 held its ground because please remember the most important range that you need to watch out for during a breakout is uh, the most important area is the first price range that if it breaks out of that and it stays at that level, then that level solidifies a support. What's interesting though for today is it broke out once again from a previous resistance, which is at the 11.96 level. So now looking at it from an indicator standpoint, 20, 50, 100, and 200 day moving averages, we're all bullish. If you look at it also from a range and a trend standpoint, they're bullish as well. So now, if I, I want to address people who are positioned uh, today. For those who are positioned today in the stock, uh, I just want to note that whatever parameter you're using, the name of the game is your ability to hold. The name of the game is your ability to uh, not sell and not give in to your emotions up until whatever parameter you're using is telling you to take profits. So as you can see right now, 20, 50, 100, 200 day moving average is not showing us anything. Uh, it's also showing us that it just broke out. For those who are following the trend, there's still no trend reversal. Now I'll zoom out once again, uh, right here. I want to show you where the next possible resistance is. So if you zoom out and try to look for where the next resistance is, we can see it right here. It's quite clear that the next possible area or resistance that you should watch out for uh, for IMI is the 13.75 level. Now, that being said, I'd like to mention this. Uh, conditions for it to continue in its breakdown. And I hope you're writing this down no? because as you all know, never naman tayo naging channel about stock picks or never to naging channel na sundin nyo yung sinasabi ko or never naman to naging channel na ito dapat yung gawin nyo. This is a channel that should encourage you to think. This is a channel that should encourage you to build your own strategy. And what I want you to test and what I want you to study is the 11.96 level. If the 11.96 level does not hold its ground, then the breakout today may be invalidated. But if it holds its ground, then watch if it solidifies as support, then your next possible resistance is right here at the 13.74 mark. So there, that's where we are right now. Next is, um, we have Lee Austin Yabut asking for MRC. Comment below, guys. Uh, grabe piol. Sobrang makabola. Sobrang makabola. Uh, MRC. Sige, let's do that. I'll just get water up. Um, for those who watched the video uh, last time, medyo nahirapan ako dun sa medyo 1, 30 minute, 45 minute mark already. Kasi uh, yun yung ayoko sa live. Uh, medyo napapadalas yung pagsalita na mas matagal. So I need a lot of water breaks also. So uh, comment below if you guys want me to talk about MRC and then uh, let's let's do this. But I just need maybe five seconds break again. Hmm. 
before I go to MRC, no, Mark Figueroa raised a very, very interesting point. For those who are trading US markets, no, grabbing GameStop, it's it's something that ako, for me, it's more entertainment than anything else. Uh the reason why it moved up is basically because you have a lot of you have a lot of people. Ako, ngayon ko lang din talaga sinundan yung pinaka movement niya because there was so much uh, talk about it already. Not shout out to Javi Rafael also who uh, broke the story to me. But uh, it it was essentially people from Reddit who saw that uh, there were some large hedge funds that were shorting uh, GameStop, and for them to squeeze de- them out, they started to buy the stocks higher. And what was interesting about uh, GameStop basically was. Uh, it brought a large hedge fund, billions of dollars on its knees. And I, I think we're seeing a shift now that has happened over the pa- past few months. We are seeing retailers uh, somehow gaining control of the markets and not just abroad, but if you look at it in the Philippine markets, I think it's a testament of how somehow, no, I hope financial literacy has come into a way na mas pinag-uusapan na talaga yung finances and investing. Hindi lang siya yung get rich quick. But if you notice it, majority of the bulk of the trades right now that are local are retailers. And even if foreign funds are not in the market, what's giving a large push of volume in the stock market are basically the local retailers. Anyways, uh, you have UST. Good afternoon from London. Uh, his name is Yuli. Hello to you. Top of the morning to you there. Let's look at MRC as requested by Augustine. So MRC, um, as you can see right here, we did this, we did this support and resistance and the trend lines also from yesterday. Um, it's still evident you know, that the GMMA is still crossing lower. It's still also in uh if you look at the map, the, the lines are still pointing downward, it's still continuing its change in direction. Uh, it still has not crossed the zero line, but it's still showing us that the change in direction is still pretty much intact. And from all of the movement that we're seeing for MRC today, it's still below the 0.56 level, meaning the 0.56 level where the 50-day moving average is also, is somehow, some way confirming that there's a resistance there. And as of today also, the upward trending line that started in October is still pretty much broken. So meaning those who position that are trend followers that went out because of the breakage of the trend, that's a pretty legitimate move to take profits also, even if you were not able to sell it at the highest point, but you sold because of the breakage of the trend. So current parameters right now that are bearish, 20, 50-day moving average is bearish. It's out of the uptrend. Um, MACD is still crossed. It's still under uh, the movement, the cross down from RSI. What I want to point out though for today for MRC is this, and allow me to zoom in so you see it better. Uh, so for MRC, you have a support at 0.4, which as you can see, uh, it's very, very clear that may support is a 0.4 level, then meron kong resistance is 0.56 level. Because there was a support at a 0.46 level, intraday, you know, it hit that level already and people started to buy. As people started to buy, it was strong enough also to break the 100-day moving average. But it got blocked today also. At the cl- at least it closed lower than the resistance at the 0.557 level. Now, what should you watch out for tomorrow? Bantayan is 0.557 level. How valid is it as a resistance? Because... Uh, as it becomes a valid resistance, then you may possibly see it retrace back here. But should a breakout happen, then there's a shot that MRC could either attack this area where the uptrend was, then retrace back down, or fully consolidate and just go back here to the 0.70 level. So that's it for MRC. Uh, then you have Patrick asking for MM or ASEN. I think Madam nag request na ASEN, no? But... Um, for sure, we're going to talk about MM. Uh, Annalyn, uh, Annalyn Agota, looking forward for more live watching from Thailand. Uh, Sawadika, <laughs> then you have uh, Margarita De Los Santos, good evening to you. Uh, Joshua Delmo, uh, excited to learn more from you, Sir Marvin. Um, you have Pampanga figures from Macau, hello to you, people from Macau. Um, you have Clarissa Bergs. Dami nag ask about Asen uh, from Abu Dhabi. Uh, Jack Niel from Sharjah, UAE, uh, Bobby FM from Bulacan, 
uh, Eden Manlangit from Tokyo, Japan. Sige, let's do uh let's do ASEN because a lot of people have been asking for ASEN over and over. So uh, this is ASEN. By the way, if you're joining this live session for the first time, uh, please do put your name, your stock request, and then kung tagasan kayo. And please do note that this is not stock picks. This is me sharing fundamental and technical analysis to all of you. But uh, I hope that you analyze stocks on your own. It's your money. It's your responsibility. Never buy a stock just because pinag-uusapan siya sa YouTube. Huwag kayo bibili dahil sinabi ko dito. Bumili kayo dahil sinabi ng analysis nyo. Anyways, so ASEN for the day uh, is up, no? It closed 6.63. And everything that we're doing right now is post uh, SRO X date. So uh, those who avail the... the, the how do I put this? Those who avail the extra shares get a shot to buy ASIN at a much lower price. And if it stays at this level or it's at this level, of course, whatever you bought at the SRO price, you have a good profit already. Or it somehow brings your average down if you bought at a much higher price. That being said, um, yesterday was a breakdown. Today, we had a green candle. Although it was a green candle, it failed to break above this critical resistance at the 6.65 level. So please do note that uh, it closed at 6.63, sakto sa uh, resistance natin. So what you need to watch out for tomorrow is what will happen to the 6.65 level. Is that an area where there's possible selling? Because if selling will possibly happen, then uh, the retracement back to 5.6, in my opinion, is still alive. But if it breaks out, moves at that level, then the narrative now is possible ASEN goes to the 7.4 mark. So yun yung possible uh, movement at least for ASEN. No? 6.65 is still a resistance. 50-day moving average confirms it. The current range right now is 6.65 resistance, 5.6 support. And that being said, kung hindi break yung 6.65, the possibility for it to retrace to 5.6 is alive. But if the breakout happens uh, in the next few days, the possible area for it to go is at the 7.45 level, and this presents a 14.6% upside, at least margin, for ASIN. And I just want to note also that uh, if it does not break out, the possible downside will be around 17.1%. So comment below if you're learning and comment if this is something that is helping you. So I realized, ko, by the way, um, when I did the live two days ago, we had around 400 to 500 people joining us. Uh, right now, we have around 200 people joining us. Do you prefer it but that the lives or the videos are around 10 p.m. Uh, para nasa bahay na kayo? Or sa gabal ba to sa dinner ninyo? So I can time it better. No, sakto na nagla-live tayo. I can get instant feedback from all of you. Uh, please do let me know uh, when when is the best preferred time, Philippine time, that you would want me to normally do a live. Kasi ngayon, nangangapa ako. Meron ako ginawa kahapon, halos midnight. Then meron ako 10 p.m. Then then now. So I'm not too sure. I just want to know your inputs. Okay. Uh, Margarita De Los Santos asking for Ali MM and Dito. What do you guys want me to analyze here? Sige, ganito lang. For sure naman, we're going to analyze uh, Dito and MM. So let's go most likely with Ayala Land because... Uh, I mentioned this in the first video that came out around 5 p.m. that Ayala Land no, got ma massively also sold down. It was down 3%. Value turnover was around 316 and bringing it to the 38.8 level. So, uh, yeah, let's do let's do Ayala Land. Uh, let me put this here. Uh, Ayala Land. So, again, I need to have a break. I need water. I don't want to na say lang. People from Kumu, hello. Okay, let's continue. A uh, couple of things that I'd like to mention. Um, RSI, um, Ali is already in oversold levels. Another somehow not so positive uh, indicator for Ali is it's dipping below the zero degree line already for MACD. So for those who are trying to see bottoms, RSI is relatively oversold. However, MACD is showing us that there might be a trend reversal uh, because of its dip uh, from the zero line. And GMMA also, if you look at it, it's relatively bearish. Now, let's look at the other chart patterns here. Uh, if I zoom in, I want you to see this. The resistance at 40.4 is holding. The support at 
38.12 is still there. So the reason why I say that is this. The red close today at 38.8 merely confirms that 40.4 is a valid resistance and 20 and 50 day moving average is blocking it. So in my opinion, as long as 38.12 will hold as a support, then you may see a thin range for Ali to move 40.4 resistance, 38.12 support. That could be the possible narrative and progression for Ali over a short period of time. But we may see deeper movements down if the 38.12 level does not hold. And from a trend perspective, no, pag nabasa yung 38.12, we may see this extend. And we may see it challenge somehow uh, this level at the 34.6. So yung 34.6 na yan, andun na yung isang malakas na support level natin, and andun din yung 200-day moving average. If that key support range is broken, then there's a shot no, that we may see a broader term reversals, at least for Ali. So in my opinion, all eyes should be at the 38.12 level because if that does not hold and Ali breaks down, then there's a shot no, looking at this progression right here that it could mainly possibly retrace. Should it break down uh, under the condition that it breaks down from this level? Na pwede siya mag-retrace back here, uh, going back to the 34.6 level. And MACD is showing us also that it's it's somehow not trying to dip below. So dito mag-deviate also yung fundamentals and technicals also. That if you are a fundamental investor and then you believe Ali will recover sometime later, the lower it is, the, cheap, the, cheap, the cheaper it will be for you and you will have the ability to position lower and you may get to have a bigger base. But if you are a trader, of course, if you are a person who's following the trend, you would want it na nagre-reverse siya into an uptrend, not something that's going back and falling into a downward uh, trending line. In the same way, ganun din sa support and resistance, you don't want to buy a stock that's falling below the resistance or you don't want to also buy a stock that's breaking down from a support level. So that's where we are from Ali. Uh, we have people from Doha, Qatar joining us. Fitz, Gerald, Aguila from Doha, Qatar. Hello to you. Sa mga, sa mga kababayan natin dyan. Hello. Tagasan ka sa, ano, sa Qatar. I love the Corniche area. Uh, that's my favorite part of Qatar. Uh, just girly. Nag-exit ako sa APL today. May konting gains. Good or bad decision. Para sa akin, para sa akin na, um, it's never, that's, that's a, I, I like this question by Just Girly kasi it goes beyond, uh, I actually I like questions like this because it goes beyond anong stock yung magandang pag-usapan. Uh, I like it because she's asking about strategy. She's asking mga logical questions and th these are the questions that I'd like to answer. In my opinion, it's never about kung magkano kin kinita mo. It's never about also gano kalaki yung loss mo. But it's more about sinunod mo ba yung plano mo. Did you exit because kinabahan ka? Kasi kung you exited because kinabahan ka, then in my opinion, sayang. Kasi you followed emotion eh. Or did you exit because uh, you you felt you felt na I might miss out on something else or you 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 sold because you might lose out some of the gains and that's still emotion. Pero if you told me that you exited because Ano yun, natamaan yung signal ko, whatever you're using, whatever speed of moving average you are using, then okay lang sa akin. Kasi it tells me that every time you follow your plan, it builds strength eh. Na nakita mo eh, ah, dito ako nagkamali sa trade na to. Subukan ko nga ulit gamitin tong 10-day moving average, 20-day moving average for the next trade. If you watch the video that I had with Olivier Danvel, um, He's in Itoro, no, one of the best, best Forex traders uh, for the past five or six years. Never siya nagkaroon ng losing month. Sabi niya, it's never about making or losing money. It's always about following your plan. And that's what I want to also impart to you. Um, you don't have to look at anong kinikita ng kaibigan mo, anong kinikita ng ibang tao. You have to look at sinunod ko ba yung plan ko? Sinunod ko ba yung reason ko kung bakit ako bumili? At sinusunod ko rin ba yung reason kung bakit ako nagbibentaan? I would like to submit this to all of you that uh, if you watched my pre my other videos or read my books, I would say this, that 
before you even buy a stock, it would be more important also above and beyond placing a price kung saan mo siya binili. It's also more important before you even buy it, alam mo na kung ano yung condition kung bakit mo siya ibibenta. Kasi if you do not put the condition kung bakit mo siya ibibenta, then suddenly, uh, in the middle of the game, when you see your stock go up 20%, 20% tapos 12% na lang ngayon, that that emotion at the back of your head that saying, pera na baka, baka maging bato pa, uh, will cause you also to sell out of emotion. And I'm not saying this just for APL. I'm saying this for every other stock that you're watching. Even if it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or it's Tesla, or it's uh, Apple, or it's Beyond Meat, or anything else under the sun, uh, it's very important that the plan should uphold more than anything else. I hope that this is helping. I hope that this is helping you. Um, si Carla Abay, taga, na, nasa Kumo din pala siya. Guys, nasa Kumo ako. Nasa Kumo ako. Na-BI na, na ako ni Salve dito. So for those that want to see my face lang, na parang ganito, Kumo yung panoorin nyo. But for those who want to watch the charts, uh, YouTube pa rin. Okay. Uh, uh, this one, si Leo Amoroso from Japan. Um, Leo Amor is asking for tech and Del Monte, which uh, Del Monte, for some reason, has been showing good strides also. Uh, I want to let you guys vote also, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, what do you guys want, tech or Del Monte? And then I'll drink again. I need to drink. I need to uh, I need to preserve my voice. And I need to also at least pause for a bit. So sustainable yung video natin. I'm not seeing it. Mona sobrang natabunan na. Uh, sobrang natabunan. I'll, I'll, let's do ano. Mona natabunan na yung chat. Ay, hindi ko makita yung, hindi ko makita kung ano yung gusto nyo. Um, maybe, sige, Del Monte na lang. Natatabun, natatabunan. Sorry about that, guys. Ha. Tinanong ko pa kayo, pinavote ko pa kayo. Okay, so Del Monte, uh, as what I've mentioned over the past days, large move up. But if you follow the charts also today, uh, and yesterday, nagkaroon ng sell down. But what's so important that I'd like you to look at also is this. Uh, look, the sell down yesterday was very, very volatile from 10 pesos. <laughs> Please remember, uh, January 25, 8.65 to 9.8. Then the next day, uh, 10 pesos open, which was higher already than the previous day. Then nagkaroon pa siya ng high ng 10.48, which this one causes a lot of excitement for people to see their stocks go up. But then it got sold down, then it closed at the 8.5 level. And that being said, uh, I want to point this out that when that happened, it hit this particular level, uh, this level of support at the 8.257 level. So key thing to watch out for, and the protection and 20-day moving average, bumagsak pa siya, hit the 20-day moving average, started to go up. Now, that being said, if it bounces tomorrow, then this is the current range that I will look at for Del Monte. It has a shot again to go back to 10 if this uh, support level at 8.2 will hold. Because as of now, it's still right there. So that's the current possible progression of it if it bounces. So it's, it gives you medyo malaking spread to 22 plus percent na trade. But if it does not hold, then the possible retracement could bring it around here at the 7.2 level. So that's where Del Monte is. It's currently at the support or it's threatening to break down from the support. If it does not hold 7.2, if it bounces, possible area for it to go is at the 10 peso mark. So let me greet some people. No, medyo natabunan na kasi. Christian Cordero from Balanga, Bataan. Uh, Marjan Mangubat, hello to you. Uh, Ronald Lee is asking for MM. Arnold uh, Lequigan, good evening to you, Sir Marvin. Uh, Sir Anong is asking for... Uh, so asking for JFC. Nap, na naman. Sobrang dami. Um, 
Terence Yap is asking for the possibilities of Dito to be able to reach the same value as Talon Globe, um, BSC. Um, Daniel Bakilo is asking for BSC. By the way, no, uh, this, this is a good question. Uh, the stock price of it is also, please remember, a merong EPS component. Yan. People buy based on based on how cheap they think the stock is based on its earnings. So uh, if for it also to go to the level at least of Globe and PLDT, the EPS or the earnings should somehow commensurate for uh, the price that they are paying for, for Dito. That's one. And number two is for those that would look at it and compare them from a dividend standpoint, uh, which I, I think since Bago in Dito, it may not be able to give large dividends yet. So I I, I will watch what March will be for Dito uh, before how they operate, gano kadami sales kagad nila, gano kadami mag-switch. Or I think the narrative there, panawarin nyo bukas, um, we will have Alvin Ang as guests and other economists in the show that the the, the narrative that they're seeing is at the start of susubukan ng tao yung dito, they will get two SIM cards and then try to see how reliable is it, how good is it, uh, and then that's the time that they will probably focus in it. But you will see similar to what happened to Sun Cellular before, I think, that there will be people who will keep two SIM cards. So there. I I, I plan to mention this since madami nagtatanong about BSC and also... Uh, and also APL, and katula din ito, si Rain Bell asking for dito ACMM. Uh, we're, let's try to do let's try to do all of those stocks in one go. So uh, I will try to talk more about that also dire derecho, uh, dire derecho ngayon. So there, let's do this. And if you guys are joining me for the first time, by the way, uh, my name is uh, Marvin Germo. Uh, I'm a stock market trader and investor. I'm also a best-selling author. All of my books, uh, w- which we placed in national books or have been bestsellers with uh, the goal and the heart not to just give as much value and content for Filipinos to be financially free. So anyways, let's do this. I want to talk about APL, BSE, PHA, DITO, and Mary Mart based on everything, every question that you guys have been asking. So let's look at this. Let's look at APL first. So APL, this is how the trajectory of APL is. As you all know today, no, APL had a very, very, very large uh, movement up in terms of an intraday uh, perspective. I mentioned this in the first video a while ago that APL had a value turnover of 1.5 billion and it moved 25.89%. That's so interesting, guys. And this 1.5 billion retailers, yeah, this 1.5 billion local, locally driven, yeah. Hindi yan, um, how do I put this? Hindi yan pushed by uh, hindi yan pushed by institutions it's pushed mainly by local retailers so at least so you get the narrative of APL now looking at the charts you see this uh, I mentioned yesterday that it was floating at the support of 0196 na kailangan natin bantayan is if mag close siya below 0196 then there's a possibility there's a shot that it may possibly break down but look at it today. Today, the stock or APL opened at 0.169 or tama ba yung pag, pagbasa ko? It opened at 0.17, sorry. Close to 0.169. As it, close, as it opened to 0.17, it broke down, essentially. But buying pushed it up to make it close here at the 0.248 level, which andun yung 20-day moving average ngayon. So that being said, what blocked APL from pushing higher was a 20-day moving average, which right now works as a short-term resistance for the stock. So I repeat, the 20-day moving average is blocking the stock and it's kind of looking like a resistance as of this point in time. But that being said, should tomorrow the stock open above the 0.249 level, should it open above the 0.249 level and hold its ground, then it's well on its way again to attack this particular resistance level. So so ngayon, based on the data that we have right now, 7.14 p.m. on a January 27, the current support right now is back again at 0.196. The current resistance right now is 0.29. If 0.29 is broken out from, then the narrative to 0.445 is alive again. But before all of that could possibly happen, uh, 0.29 resistance 
0196 support. And if that does not hold, this levels here where the 50-day moving average is and the 0111 level is also in play. So that's where we are right now for APL. Uh, the next stock that I'd like to talk about is BSC, which also had a lot of volatility. Comment below, by the way. I said APL, BSC, PHA, DITO, MM. Among the five, which is something that you're tracking, uh, I want to know based on at least a subscriber base, ano yung something na medyo enticing sa inyo, APL, BSC, PHA, DITO, and MM. So anyways, BSC, um, value turnover, 836 million. I mentioned this in the video um, where we did the PSC update that uh, one-fourth of the value turnover for the day was basically APL, BSC, and PHA. So BSC, 50% up, massive volume also at 836 million. And you saw it go and close at the 1.11 level. So for BSC, um, it looks, no, pag tinignan mo siya, the configuration looks similar to how uh, APL looks like. What do I mean about that? Uh, it dipped, it hit a support level yesterday, which is at the 0 0.77 level, predominantly for uh, for BSC. Then today, same thing, intraday opening, it broke down. That's why for me, no, um, the close is much stronger than the opening because it gives you sentiment on the final stamp of approval of what uh, the market believes it should be. And it also gives you, uh, I like the volume at the latter part of trading than the first part. Ako essentially, no, um, to share some of how I, how I do things, I normally don't have to compel myself to log in around 9.30. I normally try to see it around 10 plus already when all of the volatility a bit for the morning or at least the opening is out already. So I see how prices are starting to stabilize. Because what's more important for me really is how it will actually close. Now, if you're looking at BSE, you see it right here. Uh, it broke down for the opening, but essentially intraday, it started to push and make its way back up. And for the day, it closed above the 1.005 level, meaning it's above this resistance at 0773, now converted as support. It broke past the 20-day moving average. And now it broke past the 1.005 resistance. Now, one thing you need to watch out for, if you notice it, no, para para wala pa ulit ulit lang in technicals, it's support resistance lang. Uh, you could use any other parameter, pero halos lahat yan, um, it's mostly just support and resistance, support and resistance, support and resistance, support, support and resistance, support and resistance, support and resistance, support and resistance. Anyways, uh, 1.005 level. Um, if that solidifies as a level of support, then the whole move uh, back here is possible. However, if this level does not hold, then the retracement back to this area is also pretty much possible. So in my opinion, everything will hinge over the next few days on the 1.005 level because if that does not hold, then downward correction is still in play. But if that holds, maybe a consolidation from 1.005 to 1.9 is also possible. I just want to note this, no, the downward push was predominantly uh, also captured by the RSI, and also this change in direction was also captured by MACD. So we have AP, BSC, comment below if you're learning, and comment if this is something that is helping you and massively giving you uh, value. By the way, water break once again. So I don't like it. it's it's a bit tiring, but for you guys, uh, PHA, uh, and but I love it. No? I I I love stocks, but uh, above and beyond trading the markets, the idea that you get to share what you know, I I think that's something that uh, is even more amazing, and it's fun that you get to have a YouTube channel with 215,000 215, plus subscribers that you get to influence and share your ideas. And I, I think that's, a, in my opinion, uh, for me, that's the greatest sweet spot for me, that I get to invest and do what I love. 
but the same way i get to share my ideas to all of you which i also love and if you follow if you've been following me for quite some time we talk a lot about the stock market we talk a lot about money but i'm the type of person that you invest pero hindi pera pera lahat money is never the end goal money is never the target money is just a tool for you to be able to unleash <clears throat> what your purpose is for you to be able to do what you're called for in life. And uh, the stock market is glamorized as something that stock market ka para magawa mo yung gusto mo. Para sa akin, hindi. Do something that makes you happy. Do what makes you feel alive. Do what yung gusto mo gawin. So, kung gusto mo maging surfer, tapos on the side gusto mo mag-stock, be a surfer. You don't have to follow what the norm is. You don't have to follow what everyone else is doing. And if you're a real estate investor and you're watching this and parang you're thinking na pressure na ako mag-stocks, kailangan ako mag-stocks because all of my friends are earning from the stock market. A real estate investor, okay, you have to do you. You have to always do what makes you feel alive because I, I'll i say this. This is, I think Kobe Bryant died, I think yesterday or today, one year anniversary to those who are like me that are Kobe fans that we like Mamba mentality. Uh, one of the things that he said is one of the biggest mistakes of people is they think that they have so much time and I'll say this also to all of you. I want to use this platform as a way to reach out to you that it's not just about money. I want to share this that your time is limited. Stocks is good. Stocks is amazing. But don't just waste your time doing the things that you're not passionate about, doing the things that you don't feel make you alive. Anyways, I don't know why I got that route, but I, I, I believe I said that because I think that's for someone right here. And if you if you need that, uh, I hope you run with it and you push further. Uh, PHA. So PHA is this a business shift? No, stocks <laughs> are Yeah. So this is PHA. Uh, PHA looks different because uh, PHA did not break down from a very significant range. Although I plotted this a few days ago, uh, this particular area which it broke no uh, which is smaller naman na support level for those who attended our stock smart sessions you know what we always say that uh, the sh shorter and the smaller the support is the weaker it is the sh longer and uh, the longer the support is the stronger it is so it broke this area yesterday, also confirmed by the 20-day moving average, pero it pushed up on the same day or the next day, bringing it above this particular level. So uh, AP, uh, PHA closed at 2.16, which brings it above this support that I drew, the small support level at the 1.936 area. Right now, the main support level still, in my opinion, is this at 1.276. So, kung, kung hindi niya, I think, ah, kung hindi niya tumabasag, this particular area here, hindi tumabasag, the possible narrative is it could still boil down and go here. So, please do jot this down. For PHA, the main support level is 1.2. The main resistance level is 2.9. It broke away already from this upward trending slope that we have right here. And it's on the second day of it not being part of that particular uptrend and this particular breakage here was supported by this cross down from the macd and also this failure to break the resistance or at least this breakdown from the 2.9 level was captured here via the rsi so what should you make of this main resistance 2.9 main support 1225 if it pushes to the 2.9 level the way you would read that is what if it does not break the 2.9 level? Then that could be an area for you to either avoid the stock if you own it, or if you have cat, or if you sorry, avoid the stock if you have cash, or if you're positioned, that could be an area also for you to also take profits. So that's how you could possibly spin it. But again, now there's a lot of volatility and volume also for PHA. So for APL, BSE, PHA, uh, I, I really believe those those are price driven. Uh, whatever movement that you're seeing is is not essentially fundamentally driven, but people are buying it because they have an expectation that there could possibly be something that could happen. That's why I'm buying it now because there's a possibility that it could possibly go higher at a later date in the future, given this event would happen. But it's still borderline. No? People are anticipating a particular event. And ako, I, I love buying stocks that have 
uh, fundamentals. But anyways, that's APL, that's BSE, and that's PHA. Uh, I want to talk about DITO and MM. But before I traverse no, for DITO and MM, um, we have two slots left for Stock Smarts Manila, which is happening this Saturday and Sunday. It will be in Bonifacio Global City. For those that want to join us there, the link is in the description below. Uh, two slots left. I uh, should, I think, it should be one. But I don't know there's two slots because there was someone that um, they weren't, they weren't able, they, they won't be able to travel uh, over this weekend. So two slots. Link is in the description below. We're gonna talk about all of these things that I'm talking about here: candlesticks, support and resistance, trend lines, moving averages, MACD, RSI, then a lot more. No Bollinger Bands, Fibonacci retracements, um, parabolic star. Then we're gonna add some volume. Uh, analysis also into it. And, and I'm, I'm excited for that because it's nice also to, maganda tong video, video na to, but it's also nice to meet people uh, face to face uh, uh, following uh, proper social distancing protocols as well. Anyways, let's continue. Dito, this is Dito. Uh, Dito, yesterday broke down. For today, this the support is upholding itself. However, it got blocked by the 20 day moving average. I repeat, uh, Dito went above. The 11.37 level, which 11.37 right now is a support. But for this to legitimately continue its upward progression, it has to break above the 20-day moving average, which is at the 11.94 mark. So if it, I'll put a line here lang no, just for reference. So you see it since it's 11.94 mark, or sabi natin 12 pesos na rin. I'll zoom in so you see it better uh, right here. Ayan. So... It has to go above the 12.04 level because nandun din yung 20-day uh, moving average. But if it does that, then uh, Dito could be on its way again to progress back here uh, to the 14 peso mark. So conditions for it to possibly go back up to 14. Again, number one, stays above. Of course, prerequis sobrang prerequisite stays above the 11.3 support level. But above and beyond that, breaks out from the 12.04 mark. And it will just continue its current consolidatory movement. So please do note that Dito, uh, if you'll allow me to zoom out here, from January has been consolidating. So for the whole month of January, Dito, in all intents and purposes, has been basically consolidating as well. And if you look at this also here, um, measure the, the volume no, has somehow tapered down a bit. If you've been following the progression of Dito, uh, tumatama yan more than a billion, eh. um, especially on its larger swings up over the past few weeks. So, but uh, right now, July, uh, sorry, January 2021, it's consolidating with a range now of 11.4 uh, with a shorter one at 12 and then a, a resistance at 13.95 x 14 mark. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out, RSI is very close already to oversold level. So this particular area where it crossed down from the RSI, it factored in this particular push down. So there. I want to talk about MM because a lot of you guys have been requesting MM also. By the way, um, yung, itong segment na to, APL, BSC, PHA, Dito, MM, we're going to make a, a solo video for this as well because uh, it has been one of the most requested stocks also in in the channel. So for MM, it closed up 2.47%, uh, 310 million in terms of value, uh, 310 million in terms of value turnover, and it's back to the 7 peso mark. So ganun ka solid yung support and resistance. Same din with Dito, no? MM is currently sideways. Uh, we mentioned this yesterday that it, it hit the resistance, fell down, broke this upward trending line, broke the 20-day moving average, and the common narrative is it needs to hold this 6.4 support level, which if you look at it intraday, that's why I love technicals. And that's why if you're asking me about news and then mga rumors and speculations, I honestly don't know anything about it because I don't look at uh I, I don't look at news and speculation. I just really see things from the charts. And that's what's amazing about technical analysis. Everything you need to know is found in the charts. And the reason why I share that also is dun ko na ko mga maliko nung when I was starting, no, uh, I started in my early 20s. And yung mga maliko is may hot tip yung kaibigan ko, sinunod ko sila, uh, only to make my mistake from it. And I learned so many times from that. It was painful mistakes. Uh, that sila naman, di naman sa sinasabi nila na bilin ko yun, but they, they, they were also just excited about it. 
but I realized that I should have followed, I should have studied more. Na kung inaral ko siya, hindi pala dapat siya dapat bilhin. And anyways, this is where MM is. Uh, two things that I like to mention. Um, this upward push is over. It's below the 20-day moving average. And I'll just plot this also similar to how I drew yung sa dito. Uh, if you want to see it push back to the 8 peso or 8.08 8 .08 level, it must break past the 729 level. Kung hindi, this will be a very, very thin consolidation between the 50-day moving average and the 20-day moving average. So what we do know right now is meron talagang support pa rin as of now at the 6.4 mark. And it's not just anymore based on this line that I drew. It's also based on uh, the 50-day moving average that's protecting it. That's what we have right now for MM. And your resistance is at the 7.3 mark. So support is 6.4. Resistance is 7.3. But the main consolidatory resistance is still at the 8 peso mark. So conditions here is if Mary Mart does not go above 7.29, possibility it retraces back to 64 but if it breaks out from 7.29, then you could possibly see it go to the 8 peso level. Are you guys learning? I hope you are. And I hope that this is something that's adding value and content to you. Comment below if you are and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. But um, there. So we talked about APL, BSC, PHA, DITO, and MM. Comment below if you guys have other stocks that you guys want me to talk about as well. I'll just have a quick water break once again. Maybe just a few more stocks. Now we've, I didn't realize we've hit an hour already of doing videos. Whoa! Who's this? Someone sent me fifty pesos. Yay, fifty pesos! <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you so, thank you so much. That's so nice of you. Uh, you have uh, asking for IMI. We talked about IMI already. Uh, tapos na. Uh, Hazel, uh, Kalkan. Hello to you there. Uh, Javet Servito asking for JFC BDO SMC. Sige, maybe let's do uh let's do JFC. Um let's do JFC. Uh DD Read. Uh for those asking about DD Read, we have a lot of videos. Niman a lot. We have two videos on it. Uh hello to you, Leia. Um yeah, we have videos already on DD Read, no, but primarily uh for those asking for DD Read, my main motivation or at least the things that I'm watching for REITs, no? uh, yung importance ng gaano kalaki yung possible dividends na makukuha ko. So, my, my, mentality for, my mentality for REITs is basically this. Um, dividends first, whatever I get from capital appreciation, bonus na lang. So, that's how I'm looking at it and that's how I'm approaching it. Sige, I'll uh, Ariel is asking for URC and DNL. Unahin muna natin yung JFC. By the way, uh, I'm not sure if this it will come out this weekend or if it will be uh, next week. Uh, we are we are having the CEO of DNL join us. So that would be something that would be very, very, I think, uh, interesting also for all of us. So let's continue. Um, the, let's continue. Asa na yun? Okay, let's do Jollibee, then let's do URC. Then maybe, ano, by the way, I, I want to take this time na rin since live tayo. Uh, I've been posting a lot of videos about business, entrepreneurship, e-commerce. May lalabas ulit later, third part na. Do you enjoy those type of videos na podcast style na may in-interview ako tapos business and e-commerce yung topic? Or you're just really here for the channel about stocks? I'm asking that so that I know what videos I would like. If you don't like those type of business videos or yung mga may interview ako tapos wala na mga charts, charts, uh, let me know also. And then, uh, so that, and then kung meron ko yung mga requests also on topics that you guys want me to do, um, we can do that as well. So, let's look at Jollibee. Naghang yung aking chart. And Okay. So, Jollibee. So Jollibee right now, second day already of its breakdown from the 186 level. I think we talked about this yesterday. Panorin yung sa second channel ko. Uh, for those who don't know, baka hindi nga alam, I have a second channel. It's called Stock Investing Made Easy. Uh, some of the technical analysis videos that are not in this channel are in that channel. So you can reference that and you can watch that. But 
uh, for we talked about Jollibee there yesterday. So masakit ang throat ko. Uh, so for Jollibee, it's the second day of the breakdown. It still has not gone above the 185 level. So the reason why I say that is the current resistance still is 185, 186. Hindi nagbago yun. And the current support level is at the 168, 169 level. So current movement still for Jollibee is 186 resistance, 168 support. Uh, you have, it's still below the 20 and 50 day moving average, which they act as resistances. And right now, no, uh, one thing that I'd like to point out to all of you, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out lang para mas malinis to. Al alisin ko lang din yung konting dumi, medyo madumi na tong drenowing ko. And inom na rin ako ng tubig. <laughs> Yan, is the upward push here from October was already broken. And what I didn't fear, but what I want to note to a lot of people who are looking at it from a bearish stance is it's... It's this mainly, look at this. Uh, it's trying to build another uh, downward trending uh, slide. No, So this breakdown is significant because it reinforces more downward push. But let's see if the 168, 167 level and this upward trending, this longer uh, uptrend here. I'll zoom out again so you see it better. Ayan. This upward trending line around the 169 level will hold its ground. If it does then it protects Jollibee from a longer slide downward. Because, so again, I'll, I'll show you this. Um, I'll zoom in. So we all have established right now that 169 is a level of support. So if selling will happen and then natagos ni Jollibee dito, then we may see a longer and deeper movement down. Last layer of protection is the 150 level. But if that does hold, then consolidation right now for Jollibee would be like this. And somehow, no, for it to really go up again, it must break out this level so that it invalidates whatever downward push na meron dito uh, that, that started from its failure to break out from the 210 level. So that's where we are for Jollibee. Um, tinanong ni Ariel Buenzuceso, URC, or uh, DNL. Sige, let's do URC. I just want to see some of your other messages. Yung problem na pag madaming messages, medyo nadadrown out. Um, that's, this is a good question, uh, but you watch the other videos, yung older videos. I have a lot of videos talking about uh, that. Yun nga lang, uh, you have to backtrack. No? Kasi uh, sa dami ng videos, um, madam madami na. And I realized that there's a lot of people who like talking about themselves. Ako, I, I okay din naman mag-share, but uh, I like informing you guys more than talking about. Oh, ito na ako ngayon. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that type of person. I. It's okay. Para sa akin, uh, success is, or at least financial freedom is, you have enough that you get to buy what you want when you want. You get to do what you want when you want. Also, and it's never. Uh, that's never about. Kung meron ka na bang one billion, five hundred million, one hundred million. If you get twenty million already and you put it in in something that gives you dividends, and that twenty million is enough already for you to live your life, then that's financial freedom. So and that's irrelevant. Kung magkano yung kinita ng kaibigan mo, and yun yung medyo ano sa market no people like comparing. Uh, but the main the main issue is you don't have to compare yourself with other people. You just have to do you. Um, URC right now is currently breaking down. Um, you have a support at the 145 level, which natamaan siya two days ago. Nagbounce siya today, uh, yesterday, but today it broke down. So it's quite significant because MACD is already below zero. It broke this upward trending line that started in October. It's below the 20-day moving average. It's below the 50-day moving average. And now it's below the 100-day moving average. If it does not go back 
and because it violated already the upward trend i'll zoom in so you see it better right here possible possibility is it could retrace to as low as this here to where the 200 day moving average is dina siya nag drawing uh, right here to around 135 pesos but if it does that no kundi siya makabalik sa 145 level then the upward trend since march that happened to urc uh, may be somehow shifting and changing and you have gmma 200 day move uh macd the long trend line 20 50 and 100 day moving averages all confirming it so there um i have to put it and have a rest already i've been talking for more than an hour and i have to rest my throat also especially that there's a sem we have a seminar this weekend so for those of you guys part of this stream that will join us this weekend i hope to see you uh, but expect pasul -pasul -pasul, i'm going to try to do a combination of live videos then um just an announcement in the next few an hour or so maybe uh third video e-commerce how to make money via shopee and lazada uh, with the ceos of um great deals uh shoppertainment live and stratquad so there to all of you papasadaan ko lang yung mga nandito para mag greet ko din kayo but uh, for those who won't stay anymore thank you so much for joining me uh it's an honor to be able to serve you to be able to share uh, my ideas and my thoughts to all of you um thank you that uh, it's just really nice to see more and more filipinos uh, leaning and moving towards financial freedom so if you like more of this appreciate it if you can smash the like button share this so that we expand financial literacy not just financial literacy but um sharing investments in the right way and it's not just about money altogether so that's it for now marvin germo i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.